welcome to roadmap to residency hello everyone i am aviras welcome to our club 250 match maker sessions we will be running through some questions with you guys to help you on our journey to a 250 so which of the following histological findings is most characteristic of this lesion a 45 year old woman presents to her primary care physician with a painless slow growing mass in the subcutaneous tissue of her upper back Physical examination reveals a soft, mobile, non-tender mass that is easily compressible. The mass has been present for several years and has not changed in size. There is no associated erythema, warmth, or overlying skin changes. Which of the following histological findings is most characteristic of this lesion? Atypical cells with high mitotic activity, collagenous strands surrounding the mature adipocytes, diffuse infiltration of lymphocytes and plasma cells, Mixodestroma with spindle cells or nests of neuroendocrine cells. So this patient's clinical presentation is consistent with the lipoma, which is a common benign soft tissue tumor composed of mature adipocytes. Lipomas are typically painless, slow growing, and have a characteristic soft mobile feel. Histologically, lipomas are characterized by collagenous strands that surround individual mature adipocytes. So basically, you will see abundant adipocytes in the histology, and it is one of the easiest histology to determine in your medical school. So these collagenous septa give the tumor a lobulated appearance, and the adipocytes themselves are usually uniform in size and shape without ATPA or high mitotic activity. So option A is incorrect because lipomas do not exhibit atypical cells or high mitotic activity. Lipomas are well differentiated and the adipocytes appear mature and uniform. Option C is incorrect as diffuse infiltration of lymphocytes and plasma cells is not a characteristic histological finding in lipomas. Lipomas typically lack significant inflammation. Option D is incorrect because myxodystroma with spindle cells is more characteristic of Myxoid liposarcoma, a malignant soft tissue tumor. Lipomas do not exhibit this histological pattern. Option E is incorrect as nests of neuroendocrine cells are not associated with lipomas. Lipomas are composed of mature adipocytes and do not show neuroendocrine differentiation. In summary, the most characteristic histological finding in the lipoma is collagenous strands surrounding mature adipocytes as seen in option B. So now let's discuss something about lipomas. So these are the super superficial subcutaneous lipomas are the most common benign soft tissue neoplasm. They consist of mature fat cells enclosed by thin fibrous capsules. Lipomas can occur in, on any part of the body and usually develop superficially in the subcutaneous tissue. Rarely, they involve fascia and deeper muscular planes. Lipomas present as soft, painless subcutaneous nodules ranging in size from 1 to more than 10 cm. They occur most frequently on the trunk and upper extremities and can be round, oval or multilobulated. You can see this is a typical picture of melanoma. Frequently patients may have more than one lipoma and malignant transformation of a lipoma into a liposarcoma is very very rare. So the diagnosis of lipoma is, is usually made clinically. Ultrasound examination can be helpful to diagnose to distinguish a lipoma from an epidermoid cyst or a ganglion cyst. If a suspected lipoma causes symptoms, pain or restriction of movement is rapidly enlarging or is form rather than soft, a biopsy is indicated to confirm the diagnosis and exclude malignancy. Example, liposarcoma. The treatment of lipomas is if needed because of pain, cosmetics, or concerns of a diagnosis is surgical removal of the fat cells and fibrous capsule. The recurrence of an excised lipoma is not common. Let's do one more question. So which of the following is the most likely histological characteristic of this uterine tumor? A 35-year-old woman presents with a pelvic mass detected incidentally during a routine pelvic ultrasound. She reports no significant symptoms such as pelvic pain, pain or abdominal bleeding. On pelvic examination, a form non-tender mass is palpable in the posterior uterine wall. Transvaginal ultrasound confirms the presence of well-defined hypoechoic lesion consistent with Lyme myoma. Which of the following is the most likely histological characteristic of this uterine tumor? Glandular structures lined by atypical cells, Seeds of pleomorphic spindle cells with prominent mitotic figures, 
proliferation of smoke muscle cell with cigar shaped nuclei, staghorn shaped calcifications within hyaluronized stroma, papillary projections with fibrovascular cores. So this patient's clinical presentation is indicative of a uterine live myoma, also known as a uterine fibroid. Live myomas are benign smooth muscle tumors that commonly arise from the myometrium. The most characteristic histological finding in live myomas is the proliferation of smooth muscle cells with cigar-shaped nuclei. Option A is incorrect because glandular structures lined by atypical cells are indicative of endometrial carcinoma, not live myoma. Option B is incorrect as seeds of neomorphic spindle cells with prominent mitotic figures are more characteristic of live myosarcoma, a malignant smooth muscle tumor. Live myomas typically do not exhibit such features. Option D is incorrect because staghorn shaped calcification with hyaluronized stroma are not typical for live myomas, and these are more associated with uterine live myosarcoma. Option E is incorrect as papillary projections with fibrovascular cores are more suggestive of endometrial polyps or endometrial carcinomas. Now, let's review some of the first and uh, one important information about the FIGO live myoma subclassification system. So, live myoma is a benign tumor of myometrium, most common gynecological tumor, arises in the reproductive age females, and there is increased incidence in black population. Typically, multiple subtypes based on location, submucosal, intramural, or subserosal sub types. Usually asymptomatic but may present with abnormal uterine bleeding, pelvic pressure or pain, reproductive dysfunction, estrogen sensitivity uh, if uh, tumor size is increased with pregnancy and decreased with menopause, uh, enlarged uterus with nodular contour on examination, histology, uh, whole pattern of his muscle bundles, and well demarcated borders. So here you can see that this is the different fever classifications. So these are more important for the step two examination. But what I do want to show you that it, either it can be submucosal, intramural, or subserosal. Okay. Now, if it is submucosal, pedunculated, then it can go on torsion. Okay. Or if it is subserosal, pedunculated, then it can go on torsion, and that can cause severe pain. So this is pedunculated. This one is pedunculated. Okay. If the cervical fibroid becomes uh, of significant size, then it can cause infertility because it can cause blockage of the uh, cervi cervical uh, foramen and it can cause uh, the uh, breakage or stoppage in the passage of sperm from the vagina towards the uterus. So number eight, number eight can cause infertility. Okay, number seven and number uh, zero can cause uh, torsion, which can cause severe pain. Okay, and uh, these uh, three, four, and five, these all can cause some vague symptoms. Uh, and if uh, they, uh, there are large fibroids, then the most common presentation is preterm labor. Most common complication becomes the preterm labor. Also, there can be some other complications, like if uh, it is anterior cervical fibroid, then it can cause urinary incontinence, or even it can cause urinary retention, or if it is posterior cervical fibroid, then, then it can cause constipation, right? So the treatment of this fibroid typically depends upon the uh, choice of the patient. So if the patient wants to become pregnant, then we go for myomectomy. But if the patient do not want to become pregnant, then we go for hysterectomy. But the uh, medical management initially uh, remains on the management of anemia by some iron uh, folic acid tablets or uh, by uh, giving the tranexamic acid or uh, controlling the pain by NSAIDs. Now let's discuss one more question. So which of the following histological characteristic is most likely to be observed on biopsy of the nasal mass? A 16-year-old male, previously healthy, presents to the otolaryngology clinic with a six-month history of recurrent spontaneous epistaxis accompanied by nasal congestion. Physical examination reveals a form, well-circumscribed mass arising from the posterior nasal septum. Nasal endoscopy further elucidates a hypervascular lesion with a characteristic polypo appearance, and the patient denies any other significant symptoms, and there is no history of trauma. 
in light of these findings, which of the following histological characteristics is most likely to be observed on biopsy of the, of the nasal mass? Large polygonal cells with vesicular nuclei and prominent nuclei, fibroblastic proliferation with collagen deposition and numerous blood vessels, seeds of atypical lymphoid cells with irregular nuclear counters, pseudocystic spaces lined by flattened epithelium filled with keratinous material, small round blue cells forming humor right rosettes. So, the hypervascular lesion with a polypoid appearance arising from the posterior nasal septum in the absence of trauma is suggestive of juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. Histological JNA is characterized by the fibroblastic, uh, fibroblastic proliferation with collagen deposition and numerous blood vessels, making option B the correct answer. But what I do want to show you is uh, some of the images which will and can appear in your USML step one examinations. So um, before that, let's do one more question. And the images in this, uh, uh, in this particular topic uh, is very, very important, okay? And these images you need to have in mind and uh, this can and this will appear in your USML step one examination. So, uh, but this uh, JNA, the image is not typically given, but uh, the diagnosis can be easily made by uh, going through the question stream where you can uh, just uh, see that the child has a history of uh, a recurrent epistaxis and some mass in the nasal area or in the nasal septum. So whenever you see this, and uh, then you can ultimately make the right diagnosis of juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma, and then you can remember the uh, uh, sentence or the statement of the histology of the JNA. And now um, let's do one more question. So which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? A 40-year-old woman presents with a rapidly growing painless mass in her left thigh. Physical examination reveals a deep-seated, non-compressible mass with ill-defined borders. Uh, MRI shows a lesion with a heterogeneous enhancement. Coordinal biopsy of the mass is performed and histological examination reveals spindle cells arranged in a storyform pattern with a scattered multinucleated giant cells. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Fibrosarcoma, liposarcoma, rhabd uh, rhabdomyosarcoma, synovial sarcoma, or osteosarcoma. So the clinical presentation with rapid growth and histological features of spinal cells arranged in a story from pattern with multinucleated giant cells are indicative of a malignant fibrous histiocytoma, which is now classified as undifferentiated leomorphic sarcoma. Therefore, option A, fibrosarcoma is the most likely diagnosis. Liposarcoma is the least likely because liposarcoma typically demonstrate lipoblast and fat content. Uh, Rhabdomyosarcoma is less likely as this tumor is more common in children and adolescent. And also, the histological features do not align with rhabdomyosarcoma. Synovial sarcoma is less likely, as these tumors often occur in the extremities near large joints and typically present with a well defined mass. The histological features of spindle cells arranged in a from pattern with multinucleus giant cells are not characteristic of synovial sarcoma. Osteosarcoma uh, typically involves the metaphysial region of the long bones and present with bone destruction and imaging. Also, the imaging is not relevant to the osteosarcoma in this image in this question. Now, these images are very, very important, and sometimes this may be the only clue. So here you can see 44-year-old male with neurofibromatosis type 1 with plexiform neurofibroma showing rapid enlargement resulting from malignant transformation in right thigh. So the uh, feature number A is the t one weighted MRI, which shows slightly heterogeneous single intensity. Now you can see it's it is becoming clear in the picture number B, where we can see the fat saturated MRI showing large mass. Okay, and again you can see in picture number C in the gadolinium enhanced MRI how the tumor is looking. Now sometimes they will give you this uh, view or they can give you this view. Okay, they can give you this view. Now the thing is that you have to appreciate uh, the. Uh, mass okay you have to appreciate the mass plus you have to look in the question stream the symptoms okay the symptoms if they are really nerve related then they are actually neurofibromas but if the mass is in the medial side of the muscle area okay then these are not neurofibromas those are some other else tumors 
which uh, we may discuss in some other uh, videos okay also uh, here we can see in this image a CT scan in a coralum plane uh, which shows an enhancing heterogeneous mass in the vastus lateralis muscle on the right thigh and axial image B shows uh, uh, a mass as well as the edema in the surrounding soft tissues okay now this is the mass also here is the mass so this is the leomorphic on different sarcoma and this is peripheral north sheath tumor or neurofibroma okay now this is how you differentiate okay this is how you differentiate now if there is if there is calcification here in the medial side and the patient has a history of uh, horse riding and all then then, we could, then the diagnosis is completely changed okay so we are not going to discuss that thing in our this video but what i do, do want you to remember if you have to take any one thing from the entire video, then that is the uh, neurofibroma mass here. The questions will give you the picture, will give the vignette, giving nerve symptoms and ask you what the patients may have some associated finding. So the patient may have neurofibromatosis type 1 as a diagnosis and the patient may have other clinical findings or some skin findings related to the neurofibromatosis type 1. Thank you for watching. Keep studying hard.